Welcome to the Make Space for Growth podcast. My name is Sara Vicente Perret and I'm your host. I'm a corporate strategist, problem solver, social entrepreneur, writer, mom of two and passionate for growth at home, in business or in my community. This is season two of the Make Space for Growth podcast, a moment of lift. If you're new here, welcome. I hope you enjoy our conversation today. 2020 will be remembered by most as the coronavirus year. As a world, that was our common factor. But individually, we all had different stories. We all experienced it differently. For 2021, our journey continues, strengthened by what we leave behind, hopeful for what lies ahead. From a good, bad or so-so year, we rise to the challenge ahead. We lift our souls to believe. We lift our minds from the fear. We lift our lives from the dark times that we leave behind. This is our moment of lift, as we get out of this crisis stronger and together. Whilst 2021 isn't off to a great start, the inflection point is upon us. As such, for this season, I go after a moment of lift. I restart my virtual travels around the world to speak to women leaders on the change they experienced and how they see the path forward. We will be talking about the moment where we find ourselves as we choose to effect change. The moment of turning around and choosing to move forward and facing life fearless and joyful. Join me for this journey to find out how, because it is time for hope and light. My guest today is Francesca Jeans. She's the founder and creator of the Happy Self Journal. If you are connected to me on social media, you will know I am a big fan and user. Well, not me, my children. A former productivity strategist, art historian, and academic, she lives in rural Kent with Mr. Happy Self, two kids, three chickens, and a cat. We're going to talk about the chickens. Francesca started working on the journal back in 2017 as a passion project when she became increasingly frustrated at the press constantly telling us that children are growing up stressed and that mental health issues are on the rise. She became very interested in the science of happiness and how simple habits can have a meaningful impact on our happiness and well-being. And she wanted to bring this knowledge to children in a screen-free format. After more than a year of working on the concept, the Happy Self Journal was launched in August 2018. Just a few minutes of reflection a day gives children the space to think about their emotions be grateful for the positives in their lives and develop a positive attitude. Parents are reporting improved sleep, behavior, communication, and a positive outlook as a result of using their journals. Francesca's passion project is now her full-time business and the journal is available in eight languages and sold in over 150 countries. Two rounds of Innovate UK funding allowed them to distribute thousands of journals to children on free school meals in 2020. A teen edition and a continuation journal were also released in 2020. And my first Happy Self journal for three to six year olds is coming out next month. And a grown up edition is in the works. I will myself share a bit later how that has impacted us as a family as well. And how I will ever be grateful for the mummy friend that has introduced this to me. For now, let's get started. Francesca, welcome to the Make Space for Growth podcast. It's a pleasure for me to have you here today. It's so lovely to be here. Thank you. So before we talk business, there's a question I always like to do. May I ask you, what was your favorite thing to do as a child and and what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, that's a really good one. Um, I loved everything to do with art and painting and craft and stuff like that. And I think we still have like one of those things they send you home from school where they ask you what do you want to be when you grow up and it was some weird description of an art teacher which involves like I want to look at children's drawings and tell them how to do it differently which was a bit strange but yes I think it, it, it came down to kind of like art teacher um, so yeah I've always been into art. Well and there's a there's a lot of creativity in in your journals I so I've, I've spoken briefly about what you do in the intro but the, nothing like getting it in the first person can you tell us a little bit about your journey and, and how you got to run this amazing business today? 
So um, Happy Self was not a business I ever thought I was going to run. Um, if you look back, um, in a way, it's the least likely thing and yet the most perfect thing for me. I come from an art history background. I have worked in the art world for a long time. And it was really only when I returned from maternity leave after my second child that it was a very difficult uh, situation with my employer. Sadly, still all too often happening and um, I, I ended up leaving I had no choice and um, it was really it was like the depths of the kind of like recession and you know art world jobs are hard enough in any case and it was time for a big game to get home and so I set up my business um, my husband at the time was running an IT consultancy and I started a kind of small IT consultancy that moved into productivity and that was really an area I was very interested in so I ran that for a good number of years until I felt like I had the headspace to work on a passion project, which was a journal, kind of just wanting something more creative, I suppose, in, in my day to day. And that that's what took us on to this journey. And so now the journal is like my main business and I absolutely love it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's what's, what's not to love, right? And I'm sure we're going to talk about all the, of the different products. But before we do that, you know, gratitude is something that it is very close to my heart. I, I've written about it. It's created great change in my life. And and so can you perhaps, you, you have all the research, can you perhaps share a little bit with people that may be less familiar and hear all this thing about gratitude? What does it do for us? Mm, mm, it's so fascinating. Again, it's one of those things where you kind of, we all know it's good to be grateful and have it. It was really only once I started reading into the research and the science behind it that I realized just how powerful this is. So there's amazing studies show that if we practice gratitude, even the classic study, they had people keep a gratitude journal for seven days and they were able to measure the impact on their happiness at the end of that week. And then after a month, three months, and even after six months, there was still an impact on people's happiness levels. Like now the neuroscience is catching up on those um, studies to show kind of what's happening, neuroplasticity. And basically it's this lovely reinforcing of the positive pathways in our brain so if we work on looking at the good those are the pathways that that get strengthened where the kind of um those, those are the ones that our brain loves to default to kind of maybe negative and ruminations and so we're to look for the positives and it, it's amazing it's so it's such a simple thing we can all do you you've talked about gratitude but more importantly you're helping us all create a different habit which is a habit of gratitude with children which, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm also certain permeates to the adults as well that do it with their children. The, the Happy Self Journal has, you know, created significant shifts in my home with my seven-year-old. And she's been doing it for about two years. And it was thanks to it that I found out about bullying in school. It's thanks to it that we're sometimes able to kind of bring her to the good side of a bad day. Or actually to just cherish better of, of, a, bad, of a good day. And it's, it's very funny because I know we said that the next edition is only coming out soon, but I got an early preview of the four-year-old edition. And it's amazing because he sh cherishes that a lot. And it's like the one thing he does not want to stop doing even oh, when lovely. he's late for bed. So oh, can, you, can you talk more about what, what do you hear from parents? What, are, what is the impact we're, we're seeing in children and how is that changing their lives? Yeah, it's very similar to what you describe. We get the loveliest messages from parents of um, kind of these conversations that they didn't think they could have with their children. Or they're like, oh, we thought everything was great, but this has taken it to a new level. Or, you know, things that are harder to hear exactly what you're saying, you know, discovering bullying or worries or things that they had not felt able to share because things are hard to say but when you have the daily journal structure you have the sacred bit of time that you're doing with them maybe one-to-one -one at bedtime and it gives you the structure to talk about emotions and then it becomes a safe normal space to share the issues and the worries and the feelings that might be harder to express um, and also getting all of this out of your head at bedtime we get a lot of feedback that kids are sleeping better um, you know communication overall is better and then the loveliest side effect that the parents start feeling the goodness too because I suppose as you're filling it out with your child you think about your own top three things and maybe you know you read the quote of the day or the affirmation and you reflect on it and you talk it through with your child and so you two kind of end up feeling um, the same the same good results. 
Yeah, that's a, definitely something that happens a lot. You know, if there's a quote, she might not necessarily understand. She'll, she'll be like, what does that mean? And you try and explain it, what it means. And obviously, you know, you're, you're learning from it. And you do have some family activities in there where you say, well, talk about it at dinner time. And so, you know, some days where she doesn't really want to fill it in because she doesn't think it was a good day, she'll be like, oh, I'll do one and mommy does another one exactly. and mommy does another one. But actually, everyone is kind of forced to think to think through it. And and so, you know, I think it's 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 been an amazing practice um, and 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 one that, you know, it's it's really changed quite quite a bit. I'm just going to shift our gears for a second and we're going to come back about talking about this because I want to link us into the pandemic. I would be eager to leave it behind. I have to be honest, but it's not fully behind us yet. And both of us are in the UK and it's it's definitely not behind here. So look, before we start looking forward, which is what I like to do, let, let's quickly look backwards. How has this pandemic affected your day to day, you know, in your business and, and how it changed you and, and, and maybe the way you work with your team? Yeah, this has been a crazy a year initially there was a lot of uncertainty I mean we didn't know whether we were going to keep going because obviously we rely on our warehouse being able to ship out our orders and we rely on our printer being able to get paper and so you know paper mills were closed and the printer was struggling to get paper and our warehouse obviously had to put in all these measures to keep their staff safe and so you know we didn't know if they would be allowed to stay open or if they all got sick obviously then you know would they shut down what would happen to our orders and then the chaos with the postal system so there was a huge amount of uncertainty just not knowing what to plan for how to message it with people was stock going to come in or not so we had all of that and then that was kind of happening combined with a crazy period of growth because as soon as lockdown was announced obviously parents were very concerned about kids at home and you know the kind of stress and anxiety at the time and I think um, at the start of the first lockdown anxiety levels were much higher because we'd been watching it on the news elsewhere and it was really weird seeing people at home or singing on their balconies and you know all the stories of the debt rates and the morgues and it was just really grim and it was all this uncertainty because it was like coming for us and um, kids were really stressed and uh, we saw a big rise in volume of orders right in the middle of not knowing if how that was going to work for us so it, it, it kind of really hit us pretty full-on from a logistics point of view from a growth point of view we were we still are a tiny team but at the time we were even smaller we've since added a few people to help us and so it was really a all hands on deck um you know pretty full-on team effort to, to to keep going and you you know this would have been a typical season one question for me but i can't help it because you got us started you know I've seen so much. It's not just that people looked for more because they were worried about children, but you've actually created more as well with your team last year. Was this planned before or, or were you inspired by what was happening to accelerate some of what you've put out? I think it was a bit of both. We we definitely had products planned. And in a way, the fact that we were stuck at home and couldn't go anywhere or have a holiday, we just kept working. Part of me was like, we need to get these journals out because they're helping people. And we, we launched various editions. We had our teen edition come out. We did a continuation edition. I did all the work for the, you know, my first one that's coming out soon. Um, so I think it kind of allowed us to um, maybe accelerate some of our plans and kind of step up. Um, certainly the one thing that we had not planned for that we stepped up to the challenge was we decided we would apply for Innovate UK funding. They had done a they had a, a call out for UK businesses who were able to respond to pandemic related issues. And we felt that we were well placed to address the mental health concerns for children. So we were able to get a round of funding that allowed us to distribute thousands of journals to children on free school meals. So trying to reach those that were least likely to get hold of our journal and that, you know, were most vulnerable and really in need of this extra support to be able to get a journal to them was hugely rewarding for us and so we we did that in the summer and we've just we got a second round of funding so we're kind of doing more of that and that that was 
it was a side of the business that we'd always were interested in doing more because um, we do a lot of work with charities and we, we wanted to do more. So that allowed us to really accelerate the growth of that side of the business. So that was very positive. It's been so impressive because, you know, one month I would get an email from you on this edition and then another edition, the work you did with the distribution of the free journals, you know, it was it was really reassuring to see because obviously, you know, that was that was a big concern people had. So do you, one, one thing that people talked about a lot in the first season was how their own relationship with customers changed because everyone kind of ends up being in the same boat and everyone is at home. And as you said, people were looking for more solutions from you. Did you feel like people became more grateful and actually embraced this concept of gratitude more and maybe your relationship with your customers, did, did it change? Yeah, that's interesting. I think one of the things that happened is that a lot of parents who might have, you know, pre-pandemic thought, oh, life is good, my kids are happy, we, we don't need these tools, like, what, what do we need something to work on our happiness? We're fine, like, you know what, I get, I get that, but... Um, what the pandemic showed is that like difficulties happen and that really hit us. That was like a high level of issue. And there was no escape regardless of your background um, or how happy you had been before or how financially secure you were. Like it hit us all in, in some crazy way. And so I think a lot of people realize actually there are ups and downs in life and there are ways of helping us deal with those. And so, yes, maybe we should embrace mindfulness or gratitude or what, why why is kindness actually so important? What does that actually do for us? So I think people were more open because they realized that actually the pandemic, it was it, it was such a huge event and it really made us stop, sit back and go, oh my God, we have this massive problem and it's stressful and it's hard and we need to work through it. And how are we going to do that? That definitely was a shift I noticed. It's sometimes frustrating that it takes something so big to to make us realize that there are small things that we can deal with in a, in a better way. It's, I've, I've definitely heard a lot of talk about, you know, cherishing the small moments, celebrating the small wins. And, and that's, that's just, it's a positive to see. Let me change gears a little bit to you. How was the change in your daily life? Because, you know, you, you mentioned about the business. Where was your lockdown, if you can share, because we kind of broadcast around the world. And, and how did it affect your family life? And I have to say, I'm very intrigued about the chickens on the Instagram. chickens. <laughs> was, that, was that a lockdown thing? What, what happened? Yes. There? Anyone who follows me on Instagram will get glimpses of our chickens in stories um so we we live in the kent countryside so we're actually very rural um surrounded by fields and woods and so we felt very fortunate as a family that despite being locked down we had easy access to the outdoors and so that was you know a, a real lucky situation for us we had long planned to get chickens it was supposed to be our easter holiday family project but with lockdown looming especially my youngest son you know the anxiety he was really starting to feel the stress of this whole situation was looming over us and we were in touch with the chicken lady <laughs> um lovingly called the chicken lady um, who breeds chickens locally she she had a real surge of demand like everyone suddenly wanted chickens so they could become self-sufficient with eggs and so she's like you better hurry up because I'm gonna run out if you need me to reserve your chickens you need to come and get them so it's like you know what we're, we're gonna go now we ended up getting them on the Saturday before lockdown was announced on the Monday and it was the best thing ever the steep learning curve of looking after the chickens and the joy of the chickens gave our children and all of us um, a routine. We had to get up in the morning to let them out. We we had to look after them and it gave us such joy to like find the first eggs and just that, you know, that was the perfect distraction for us to get through those initial very stressful weeks. You know, we, we slowed down um, as much as we could, you know, despite work. Um, but yeah, it was very much about enjoying the simple pleasures and walks and the bluebell woods and just seeing the seasons change and taking it one day at a time. I have to tell you from all of the guests I've had here and I've asked you know what did you start during lockdown yours has to be like it has to rank up there in terms of more creative <laughs> because I would not have thought of chickens I have to say. <laughs> 
Francesca, what do you feel was your high point and your low point in this pandemic journey, if you if you don't mind sharing? I think we felt very proud when we got the Innovate funding. I think that allowed us to feel like it gave us extra confidence in the business. Like we, we can do good, not just, you know, through the business as we have when we sell to our customers, but we can do good as a business in other ways by, you know, leveraging funding and finding ways to get the product into those, you know, into the hands of those that would have needed. So I, I think for me personally and for the team, you know, getting that funding and then delivering it in very difficult circumstances against a very tight deadline was was a, a, a real proud moment for sure. I think low points, quite possibly at the end of last year, we were so exhausted. It's just the sheer exhaustion of a year of hard work combined with the pandemic. By the time I reached Christmas, I was pretty much done and, you know, clearly nobody was going to go on holidays and, that, you know, that it was just... It, it it was hard personally just being so tired and not really having any ability to step away and rest I think on a personal level was was challenging and it was also a time where there wasn't really light at the end of the tunnel if anything <laughs> the tunnel was shrinking and kind of making it look like it was only going to go worse so I think I think that was a common for for a lot of people the, the the pandemic is has brought you know has brought us and he's bringing us you know great struggles not just on the health also on the financial front and on the mental health front as we've we've talked about and and it's now 2021 we've seen a year of this and and it's time you know I'm I'm looking for time ways that we can lift things up a bit can you share tips on how you managed yourself and how you've lifted yourself up and and you know how did gratitude maybe play a part on it you know I try and practice what I preach and I I really do believe that we can all bring in these simple daily habits we all keep our gratitude journals we share our top 3 things at dinner with the kids so we take turns sharing it we got a gratitude journal we take time for mindfulness and really trying at the moment also to take more time for kind of exercise um, all of these things combined you know they do make us feel better and getting outdoors making sure we get enough daylight so I'm just trying as many small kind of micro moments so that it feels like it all adds up and it's doable I think often especially in January and new time of year people try and make too many big changes and then it doesn't work for them and then they don't understand like why but I think like lots of little micro changes slowly building up these these habits it, it does work and all I can do is keep at it myself <laughs> We, we know things are going to get better, but it's it's we're still kind of very much in lockdown, aren't we? It's um, yeah. yeah, it's a funny old time. Well, today my daughter woke up and, you know, she claimed a tummy pain and I could see she didn't have a tummy pain, but she's probably, you know, they have the end of their line as well sometimes with homeschooling. And so at lunchtime, you know, she had this online Zoom and I said, we're going to go for a walk. She's like, oh, but my tummy, I'm like, your tummy needs some fresh air. You need some color in your cheeks. We're going to go for a walk. We're going to go buy a baguette and come back. That's it. Because I had to work as well but I said if that's the one thing I do today that's that's what I'm gonna do and you know sometimes you're like oh you know how can we make them better and and sometimes a simple thing it's so simple and it was wow, so simple she came back home laughing she had the pink cheeks and I was t I was telling her you have color in your cheeks and she's like mommy what does that mean <laughs> like it just means that we did the right thing that's what it means I totally agree I think we often try and over engineer you know, a solution to a problem or try and overthink it or think that it's, oh, I need a holiday or I need this. So I can't, you know, it's, but actually, no, like you're absolutely right. Just going out for a quick walk, doing a 10 minute exercise class or a stretching or just sitting and listening to meditation or just these simple things do actually help us. And it, it doesn't need to be more difficult than that. Yeah, I think I think so. And I, I'm terrible at it because I can go on, you know, 10 hours sitting down and without moving. And I think last week I counted eight days in a row that I did not leave the house. And then I said, All right, this this cannot happen again. This And we do have a little terrace, right? But actually walking on the street, it hadn't happened. And I said, I now have to leave the house. If not every day, at most every two days, that's kind of the limit. And it's it's a small thing, right? I think we've started on, on my next question. People are putting this pandemic behind. As you said, it's it's still a little bit dark, and especially in the UK, it's, it's dark before four o'clock. How, how do you think people 
people can help themselves if you had one recommendation, one thing they can do to kind of leave behind what, what just happened or what's happening and take the next step? Because sometimes all this gratitude maybe feel a little bit esoteric, a little bit yeah. daunting, or people don't like, you know, talking about mental health because there's nothing wrong with us, whatever yeah. it is, or they don't think children suffer from mental health problems. What's your like one advice for for this for this lockdown if if you get to pick one oh if i get to pick one oh my goodness okay. what i think hopefully lockdown helped a bit but in a strange way is i do think we need to learn to switch off and slow down more and when i say switch off i mean carving out screen free time and in many ways i feel like people have gone back to simple pleasures but then i know they haven't because like netflix and all of those brands have obviously seen their numbers rise and and people are watching way more tv but i do think we need to find ways to switch off technology is amazing it's allowing us to educate our kids and stay connected and do our work but because we're always at home and then plugged in I think it's important to step back and carve out that screen free time whether you then choose to read a book listen to a podcast do some mindfulness gratitude journaling or just get out the board games or just sit with a cup of tea and like enjoy peace I, I think this is an important skill we need to relearn that just to sit and be with our, our thoughts I, I don't think we do that enough something that I think for me the journaling is an it's important to teach our kids especially our teens you know that it's okay just to sit and do nothing when's the last time you did nothing like literally nothing <laughs> Hard, I'm, not right? sure. I'm not sure I'm <laughs> the best person to answer that <laughs> but you know I look at your bookshelf behind you and I'm like oh, I have to get one like that because I've moved to Kindle a few years ago and now I do audiobooks and actually I'm feeling it a little bit because I don't go out on commute so I don't do as many audiobooks or Kindle and I try and avoid being on the screen all the time especially with the kids because I'm trying to show it's possible to do stuff without being on a screen and I'm like I need a, sh a bookshelf like that because the only one I have like that it's children's books so it doesn't it doesn't work the same way there is one thing I will ask because I you said about that before and I, I remember seeing a bit on Instagram and, and maybe that's also one small good advice that can work what's the gratitude jar and what what's the concept behind it for someone who doesn't want to do something every day so basically you just need a, a, a big glass jar or it's kind of thing you put sugar or flour in if you have that you just need a, a pen or pencil and like little sticky notes or just some scrap paper that you fold into small squares we keep ours on the dining table everything's there and every now and then once a week every couple of weeks write down little moments of gratitude like oh there was a little songbird and I watched it and it was so cute or there was a deer came into the garden or like you know something funny happened or you know we had a really nice call with a friend I hadn't spoke just like little moments that you really connected with someone or was joyful or something happened that you want to remember they all go in the jar nobody knows what everybody's adding and then at the end of the year you read them all out together so we did ours in um, early January and it was hilarious to see what the kids had recorded and what we'd all put in and we'd forgotten these little moments obviously but it's these little moments that are so fleeting and actually those are the ones that we should really be conscious of. The science is actually really interesting on this the gratitude practice is most it works when we take the time to consciously like think about this moment not just like yeah I've had a great day like no what was it about today that's when the goodness happens so gratitude jar is a great way to kind of do that if you're really not into any kind of daily practice or daily journaling I think you mentioned that it can make a great day you know be more conscious but I also find that the moments where I force my or not force but I really try and not escape the the daily practices in the bad days because when you go look for the little things you're like okay it wasn't as bad as I thought <laughs> maybe there's there's some goodness that I can take out of this and I think that's been really helpful and I think in a time like this we're like ah oh, it's terrible we're in lockdown if you go and look for the small things you might you might find that you have a pretty decent list I think certainly myself if I were to look back much further I would have been a natural much more like worrier oh my god it's so bad and like really dwelling on the problems and whereas now I can be like what can we do what can't we like what, what's be out of our control and what is in our control what are we going to do about it what is actually good about this situation so we did manage to get through the year and find lots of positives and there's the same with the kids we you know they've struggled but each time they can come back and go okay yeah there's still you know all these lovely things that we can hook on to and actually that's 
really what what keeps you going, isn't it? Yeah. So you're you're delving into you know one of of the questions that I'm trying to get out, which is you know how do you lift yourself up now? Because you said it yourself. It's still pretty dark. It's still not quite sure where this is going to end. Is it a month? Is it three months? How do you work your mindset to stay positive and actually you know in a way have something to look forward to, but not to live only on the future and actually yeah. live today with a, a positive mindset. I've always been quite into reading I quite like my stoic philosophers and I think that's really helped with my mindset this whole and I keep saying this to the kids like is it or is it not in your control like I can't do anything about this pandemic giving too much headspace about the problems is not going to help so like what is in my control where can I find the good what can I positively do and that just helps you find so much more meaning and connection yes I'm looking to the future but really it's kind of the, the meaning of our work you know the enjoyment of the work of the journal and the impact that we can make keeps us going as a business and that gives me personally a lot of meaning and it, I find it very positive that I can show my children that despite the pandemic we, we've managed to do lots of good with the business and to show them how that works you know on a kind of the, the hours that go into it is is been a very positive lesson for us as a family. Yeah, and I'm guessing they they use as your test users. Uh, they're your test users they're a lot my as well. Guinea pigs. <laughs> <laughs> so Francesca, I feel like there's been a lot of soul searching, and I think you know we've talked here about gratitude, about slowing down, and this was certainly a topic that came through a lot in season one as well. As as many of the women I spoke to, they showed this recognition that there is a benefit in slowing down. There is a benefit in actually allowing yourself to connect with yourselves and. Uh, to connect with yourself and to be more grateful and, and to really find out what, what the values are. Looking forward, how do you see this becoming a more permanent thing in people's lives rather than just a lockdown thing? Because when you can all go to concerts and restaurants and traveling, are we still going to be grateful? I'd love to think that. I feel like in many ways it's been a beautiful reset opportunity. So many positive things have come, like people who were missing their children's bedtimes and dinner times because of long commutes and desk jobs and things who've been at home who've managed to refine these joys that they kind of completely lost touch of and I hope that there's a lasting change to the way we work and flexibility and you know the ability for people to do more at home and, and, and have a more balance with their families I hope there can be some lasting change I'm sure the I'm sure the scientists would say that us humans are terrible at defaulting back into bad habits I'd like to think that there will be something meaningful that we can take positively out of this whole situation yeah i was hearing this podcast this week that talked about how long it takes you to kind of build a habit which is kind of the 21 days rule but actually it takes 66 to consolidate the habit and I, I think the first lockdown in the UK was exactly like 66 days. So there was a hope that some of these things wouldn't get lost. I don't know how long this one will take. I don't want to think about it. But, you know, maybe maybe this this added um, lockdown will, will help with some of those. What about in your business? Do you see new opportunities for you after all this change going forward? Um, I think the the business got opportunities. I mean, one of the other things that happened last year, <laughs> we relaunched to the US. So we certainly have opportunities in new markets, um, products for different age groups. We already have many languages. So I think there's, there's a lot more of that that we need to do. Um, and I think we, we only just had our second birthday last summer. So we're, we're still kind of new and, and, and figuring it out in that kind of awkward startup phase. But I, I certainly think that the last year has given us a lot of confidence and we've kind of found our voice and a, a little bit more confidence to shout about our product perhaps than we had before. So I think that's a nice way to, to head into the next Next year. Knowing what you know today, Francesca, would you have given yourself in March of 2020 a different advice? Get more chickens. <laughs> we, we wish we had got had to some more. Chickens. <laughs> we wish we had some more chickens. They've been the best thing. We should have just had more chickens. Having that distraction has really been the best thing. Finding silly things like that that just give you joy. I never thought a chicken could give anyone joy, but they do. And there it is. <laughs> 
<laughs> and what was your biggest lesson from this pandemic? Oh, biggest lesson. Gosh, I mean, I think we touched on it earlier. I think for me, being able to step back and realize that I was able to go through and stay positive and not let it kind of get me down and model that for the children. I think personally, if you caught me maybe 10 years ago, that would have been a, a different person. I would have been reacting differently. And I'm I'm really like proud that I could recognize that I've, I've had that change. And that that's good. And of all the challenges we've talked about, and I, I'm sure we didn't talk about many of the ones you had, what was the biggest one? Biggest challenge? It might sound flippant, but probably Wi-Fi, because we are very rural um, and we actually have no mobile reception where we live. So we entirely reliant on the Wi-Fi. Never been great anyway, but with the four of us all needing to work and kind of study at home and then trying to run the business, that's actually been very stressful because we can't even go to any, you know, we can't even go to like a internet cafe if you see what I mean like that's not even an option but I sometimes have to go and sit in the car if I need to upload stories to Instagram I often need to drive in the car to somewhere with 4G and I literally sit there and like wait for everything to upload because I can't do it at home which is ridiculous (laughs) (laughs) so there's like it it sounds silly but it it is it's not the kind of thing you think of but it has been a big challenge and what was your biggest positive of the year Um, our biggest positive I think really kind of enjoying time with each other as a family and being able to, you know, find ways to, yeah, to to have those moments despite everything. And um, even though we're all at home together 24-7, you know, we've managed to to have good memories and they're all set in our gratitude jar. And so we'll be opening those at the end of the year. Uh, Francesca, thank you. This has been really good. I will will ask you two more words uh, or, or two more tips. If I if I may, given the all the books you have behind you, can you recommend as a book for 2021? If you haven't read the book Mindset by Carol Dweck, oh my goodness, I so recommend that. When I first read that, I was just like, why did nobody give this to me years ago? It's so fascinating. It's all about this like growth mindset, fixed mindset, and she applies it to parents, to business, to students, and it's absolutely fascinating. So, I mean, that's you know, it's been around for a while now, but yeah, if you haven't read it, I couldn't recommend it more highly. It's, it's been on my list, so I'm going to bump it up now. Maybe I'll buy it on paper. That would be innovative. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And if you have one word to define to it, what you want 2021 to be, what's your word of the year? Gosh, that's interesting. You know, most years I've sat down and done like a word for the year and I just realized I haven't done that for this year I think there was too much going on I think probably it would need to be something like growth and some some positive twist on growth because I think like you know for the business and like where I am now personally like we've gone through a lot of change and so we kind of need to consolidate that and kind of step up and and um yeah grow grow is probably a good word for this year (laughs) Sounds amazing. Francesca, thank you so much for being part of the Make Space for Growth podcast. It was such a pleasure. And thank you for being with us. Oh, you're so very welcome. It's been lovely talking to you. I have loved my conversation with Francesca today. Can you tell how passionate I am about gratitude and what it can do for us? And it's not just us grown-ups, but also how it can build the children's mindset in a different way. I have been a big fan of, of the Happy Self Journal for a while now. And I hope my children will stay with me on that. If you don't want to try a daily practice, why not the gratitude jar? An easy and ad hoc way to start going with this great tool. All you need is paper, pen and the jar. No investment required. I hope our conversation leaves you wondering about it. Let me know about your gratitude practice and what your takeaways are from this podcast. I will be looking forward to connecting. Feel free to subscribe to the podcast or the YouTube channel now. Until we meet again, I get to do this.